Well, welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. This week we're talking about stargazing and we've got a great expert with us to kind of talk about star parties and ways to kind of get into that field. So I've got Larry Smith, a retired park ranger and dark sky expert. So that, that's an interesting title. What, what, what exactly goes into being a dark sky expert? Well, one of the things is we're always looking for dark skies <laughs> and unfortunately our dark skies are going away pretty fast. Um, I'm up at uh, Lake Whitney and our dark skies up there are about, uh, we'll give them a C plus. Mm. Uh, here in Waco, we'll probably give it a, uh, I better not say how yeah. dark sky is here, but uh, areas of the United States now are designated as dark skies locations. And so those of us that are interested in the night sky, we look for those dark skies. Uh, for instance, if you want to go a little west from here, you go out uh, toward maybe Stephenville, up toward Vernon, Texas, or of course, the Big Bend area. Wonderful dark skies there. So what? how much does the city lights and stuff, how much does that hurt your chance of seeing the, the stars good when you're out stargazing? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, the more light pollution we have, the the more area we have of uh, brightness. And um, uh, it comes to a point where you can't even see the Milky Way. Here in Waco, you can't see the Milky Way. And uh, in the United States, they say about 80 to 90% of the people who live in the United States have never seen our galaxy, have never seen our Milky Way. Uh, now, on a good night, we can see the Milky Way up at uh, Lake Whitney. <laughs> so uh, it's a beautiful sight. And, uh, uh, if I could, uh, maybe a little short story here. Yep. Uh, I retired from the Badlands National Park. That's in South Dakota. And we have a wonderful amphitheater there. Holds about 250 people. $100,000 sound system and screen and all this. And I gave presentations five nights a week to this crowd of people. So I'm giving a presentation. And on the front row is a little girl and I'm talking, I'm giving all this majestic information. She reaches over, grabs my uniform. Uh, Mr. Ranger, Mr. Ranger, uh, wait, wait, hold off, just hold off just a second. Let me talk to these people. So I'm talking and I'm visiting with everybody and, and all of a sudden she reaches over again and grabs me and I'm, yeah, wait, just, will you hold on just a second, just a minute. And so I'm giving all this wonderful information, of course. <laughs> and the third time she reaches over, Mr. Ranger. And so I finally, okay, what? is the problem. And she said, well, we came all the way from Dallas and we want to see the stars and we're not going to see the stars because it's going to rain. And she started crying. And I said, Hun, I looked up at the sky. There was not a cloud in the sky. I said, it's going to be a beautiful night. We're going to see everything. And she goes, no, Mr. Ranger, look, the cloud goes, from there, it goes all the way across the sky. So what did she see for the first time? Oh, the Milky Way. She yes. saw the Milky Way. It was yeah. that bright. Oh, and and her I, eyes, you know, got uh, big. And, and I tell you, ever one, if you've never been to the Badlands National Park, that, that is just a, a landscape that you mm. don't see anywhere else. I was lucky to go a couple years ago. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I went up there oh. for vacation. And, but great. Two, if you've never got a chance to just see the Milky Way, oh. go, go find somewhere out in the country. I grew up small town saw it a lot but then moved more into the metropolitan areas and i've got family more out in rural areas and on a mm -hmm. crystal clear night it's just it, yeah it's yeah, you don't have to have a telescope don't have nothing to sit out and enjoy uh so let's talk about your star parties and like i said you get to get to talk to these folks um how what what all first i guess what all goes into y'all star parties that y'all have well the main thing we want to do we want to make it informative yet fun now, I had the privilege of uh, teaching eighth grade science way long ago. <laughs> and uh, so we try to keep everything about that level. We don't want to get into any physics or any of that. We want to keep it short and simple, but make it fun in the star party. And we use different kinds of uh, instruments. We use different kinds of uh, materials to try to make it fun. And may I show you one real oh, quick? Sure, we'd love to. Okay. All right. So we got this here. Would you please hold the sun? Hold the sun. That is the, sun. the sun. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Now I have some <laughs> items here, and in here I want you to guess which one of these would be the Earth in uh, comparing to the sun. Uh, I'm gonna say the one of the golf balls, but I'm wondering if that's it because it looks like colored like it. A little marble little down marble, there. Yeah. He pointed out a little marble yeah. right here. Well, I'll tell you what. 
You see that little piece of dirt on the ground mm -hmm. there? That is the earth. Yeah, I was guessing. I like, like know it's a little bitty, yeah. It takes a million earths wow. to fill. Yeah. 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 That's so, pretty crazy. Uh, if we want to do another one real quickly, um, what's the largest planet in our solar system? Jupiter. Very much. Which one of these would represent the Earth as we talk about Jupiter? Oh. Would you guess? Here we go. We're it's, getting... it's small, I know that. We're we'll just gonna... go with golf ball again. Golf ball again. Well, yeah, I'll be wrong twice. Well, it's not too bad. It's pretty good. So it takes a thousand Earths <laughs> to fit, in there. fit here. So it'd be, you know, again, Nothing. by side. Nothing so this is one of the kind yeah. of fun things we do with the kids is they come up and yeah. we get to talk to them about different sizes of things in our solar system. So we're trying to provide some, some education. Um, and then also we have, let me just. I'll move this down here. Oh, if you come to a star party, I'll have to give you a star Ooh, necklace. There we go. There you go. Wow. And then <laughs> also, if you come, we get to give you Ooh, a, official sticker. a sticker right there. there awesome. He is ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the other things we want to point out, we can do some things where we look at the sun through our telescopes. Oh, okay, yeah. And you never want to look at the sun. Yeah. But this dollar bill, if you can see, yeah, yeah. is full of holes. <laughs> and what we did, we took the telescope, but we took the filter off the telescope mm. to show young kids or show everybody what the sun will do to your eyes if you look at the sun directly. Wow. So we, yeah. we always... Uh, ask for a dollar from somebody in the <laughs> audience and I have a bunch of these. I oh, yeah, yeah. Lots, lots of dollars there. And then let's uh, one more time uh, do a little demonstration. Got a straw here and I want you to kind of play with me okay. here. I want you to take the straw right. and I want you to look in the sky and I want you to look through up there, look through the building and you're looking in the sky. Mm -hmm. In the diameter of that straw are a million galaxies. Wow. Just, oh, I got a wow out of it. No, Did it you hear is, that? I got yeah, a wow. Yeah. So just in the diameter of that. And so you've got this really cool telescope back here. So well, folks, mm -hmm. do, come to one of these star parties. They don't have to have their own telescope. They can come oh, out no. and just learn about it and see through right. this. And right. you actually built this, right? It's a homemade kind of thing? Homemade telescope. Wow. And uh, it's a wonderful telescope. It's one that we use at all the star parties. Um, but we have folks that bring telescopes that are amateur astronomers. And this one, believe it or not, is a small one. Mm -hmm. This isn't one of the bigger ones that we use, but okay. we have steps and we have ladders and then it's dark, so we have lights. Mm -hmm. And so it's all safe and, and even the shortest, you know, little ones mm -hmm. can climb up the ladder and use these. And, and they, they, they touch it and they can move it around. And so okay. it's not something where, oh, don't touch that. Yes, you know, we yeah. try to get them involved. And like this telescope, even though it's not a large telescope, we, could look, we can look at galaxies beyond our galaxy. We can see galaxies far, far oh. away. And that, that's one of my that favorite things to start. I'm an, I'm an amateur, as amateur as it gets. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But, you know, the, the first time you ever look through a telescope and see a planet, you know, seeing oh. Saturn's rings or yeah, just yeah. looking at the moon, if it's always so bright, it's hard to uh, focus sometimes. But, you know, how, how amazing is that to have a, a little kid look through this and see something they've never seen, or even an adult, the first time seeing, you know, like I said, a galaxy somewhere else or, or a planet in our solar system that they've never seen other than pictures. Well, we count the wows. <laughs> and at the end of the star party, we'll say, well, how many wows did we uh, uh, get tonight? And we have star parties in various places here in Central Texas. Uh, we're having star parties now out at the Mammoth site for the first time. Uh, we do star parties every month up at Lake Whitney State Park. And then there are star parties over in Hubbard, Texas, out there at the lake. And then um, we've got some in the Central Texas Astronomy Club, which is up uh, in Clifton. Yeah. And they have a wonderful uh, observatory mm -hmm. there, and you can go in and visit that. So lots of those things are going on. And in the national parks, uh, out of the 53 national parks we have, we have about uh, 15 doing star parties. Now, there's over 400 memorials and mm -hmm and seashores and rivers, but mm -hmm. the national parks, and you can go easily and find where those are. And now, especially Texas. Mm -hmm. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department has a website. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. If you want to go hiking, you just hit the little icon that says hiking. It'll show you all the parks that have hiking. If you want to 
stargaze. Mm -hmm. There's a little icon, hit the stargaze, and it'll show all the state parks that have Star Party. So okay. it's a wonderful website uh, for boating or you know mm -hmm. anything like that in our state parks here in Texas. Um, uh, so you, you gave me the sticker before we go, uh, before we started. So major thing coming on into Central Texas, April 8th of uh, next year. How excited are you about the eclipse that's going to be happening across Texas? Yeah, and, well, once in a lifetime yes. opportunity and the 2024 eclipse will be coming right down Interstate 35. And we actually anticipate a million visitors coming through this area. So move out of your house, rent your house out. <laughs> uh, I went to the one, uh, the last one a few years ago. I went to Hiawatha, Kansas, little town of 1,200, 6,000 wow. people. And many of the people actually did uh, rent their homes for a thousand dollars a night because <laughs> people were there from all over the world and uh, it was uh, remarkable so uh, Waco's getting ready and it's up to you Mr. Weatherman oh, I know, I know. it's up to you crystal you clear, skies, those clear sky I know and with it being so in it's April all his yeah, fault yeah. if it doesn't turn out <laughs> beautiful oh so yeah and I know that April's a hard time too because we always you know weather can get crazy that time of yeah. year so let, let's look little connection and weather and uh, astronomy and stargazing what is there warm weather cold weather does that play any difference in looking out at the stars and stuff do you huh. have a certain type of weather that's best to go stargazing sure yeah um, I'm going to hurt some feelings here. <laughs> I hate to say this, but do you remember the song your mother sung to you, Twinkle, Twinkle, mm -hmm. Little Middle? That's a, she was lying to you. <laughs> she was not telling you the truth. If we look at a star down toward the horizon, mm -hmm. it's going to be twinkling. It's mm -hmm. going to be really pretty. The reason for that, we're looking through a couple of hundred miles of pollution, mm -hmm. of dust, smoke. And so uh, the light, the photons from that star are bouncing off. Mm -hmm. If we look straight up, we're looking at maybe 28 miles. Mm -hmm. Stars don't twinkle. Mm -hmm. So I hate to mention the fact that stars don't twinkle, but the other thing is the weather, obviously, because uh, with the weather uh, coming in, the, the highs that we have are, are wonderful for looking outside. And believe it or not, the winter time, mm -hmm. we have less humidity, and uh, it's you know, get your coat on and get out there. And mm -hmm. we've had several uh, nice <clears throat> asteroids uh, mm -hmm. come over, the Perseids and Geminides and all, and they come in December. And, and we got out there, and it's still you know, like 40, 40 degrees, and we watched them come in. Wow. So winter is a little better mm -hmm. uh, for uh, being technical on it, but. Any clear night, even during the summer, of course, awesome. is, is fan, fantastic. So I, I know you do this to, you're, you're, you're retired, but I know you're still mm -hmm. into it. So and you, I can just tell you have an excitement with this. What, what got you into the stargazing side of stuff and just fed this passion? Oh, well, thank you, appreciate that. Um, I was a college administrator for 25 years uh, at Baylor, and then my last gig was, uh, I was at uh, financial aid administrator at uh, Southwestern Med School in Dallas. And uh, I have to wear a pager because admissions to med school is so competitive. <laughs> in the middle of the lake, I'd get a page uh -huh. uh, about somebody wanting to med school. So I said, I'm going to do something different. And so I started teaching eighth grade science. So I went from the med school to eighth grade science. Eighth grade science, the curriculum, geology, oceanology, oceanology, meteorology, I got to teach that, and of course astronomy. Uh, so not being involved in astronomy until I was 45-ish, 46, 47, and just got hooked on astronomy. And then um, I hope anybody looking would, uh, today, if they want to go to a great place for astronomy, we've got one in Texas. It's called the Three Rivers Foundation. The Three Rivers Foundation is out past Vernon, Texas. Uh, they have observatories, a 40-foot observatory. Uh, they have star parties where they may have maybe 10 to 20 telescopes out for people to use. They have RV areas, uh, and we, we named it Comanche Springs Astronomy Campus, and it's all free. And it's a wonderful place to go, and uh, they hired me to come out and, and kind of start that, and so kind of 
got into my life with that and just and then the national parks called and went to the national parks to be an astronomer there but if we have time can i tell a little mm -hmm. story about sure. that sure. um hopefully you might be able to find the image of the star chair mm. the star chair is a wonderful instrument it's like a lazy boy and we put a huge set of binoculars on right here and we have a joystick and you can go up and back and around and all over with this joystick it's a wonderful we brought them from Australia. Oh, really? So one night at the star party, uh, a lady brought her father. The father was 84 years old mm -hmm. uh, from Childress, Texas. I'll never forget it. <laughs> and he is a cowboy. When I shook hands with him, his hands were so callous. <laughs> I thought my hands were going to bleed. But anyway, I said, what am I going to do with this elderly man? He's not going to be able to stand up. So put him in the star chair. Show him how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, now we've got other people that want to use the star chair, so we'll come over in a few minutes. And we'll, so a few minutes I go over, okay, you, let's let these other people. My golly, I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right here in this chair. <laughs> okay, well, okay, we'll let you stay a little longer. And the, he had his binoculars. He was looking at things. And so I went back over there and I said, okay, I've got these other folks now. Let's uh, let them. I ain't going nowhere. Nobody's going to move me from this chair. I've been out plowing late at night. I never knew what was up there. It's just incredible. I just love it. And uh, this went on till about midnight. And his <laughs> daughter comes over and says, Daddy, we got to go. It's long enough. So we helped him out of the chair. You can hardly get out of the chair. Man, when's your next party? I want to come the next one. So I said, well, it'll you know, be a few weeks. So they, they leave. Two days later, I get a call from the daughter. And she said, uh, Larry, I just want you to know, my father came back to Childress, Texas, and made me go to the library and get every book on astronomy, every videotape, everything they had. He's just been like a kid. I mean, it is just wonderful. But I want to call and tell you that uh, uh, Dad passed away last night. And, uh, but I, uh, his last days, I want you to know, Larry, he was excited, and I just want to call and tell you what an impact you know these programs can have on older folks as well as the children. No, so, I think that's something story. cool. You know, we when I talk with people young and old about weather, mm -hmm. they can get into that. But how you know, and you're getting to do something so hands-on with this. How how cool is it to kind of promote a you know, the science like this with the hands-on and like you said, go from little bitty kid to an adult seeing stuff they've never yeah, seen and yeah. sparking that interest. Oh, it's, it's, it's great. And that's what we want to do. We want to uh, make it, you know, as fun as possible yes. and uh, interesting. That's, that's awesome. Well, yeah. I appreciate you taking some time to talk with us. Hey, and uh, right. we'll post a link to some of the star uh, parties that y'all have around Central Texas and to the national parks as well. But uh, mm -hmm. this has been fun for me. I, I love stargazing. I've told people my when I was a little kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. I just never made it through the clouds all the way up. And now I just uh, study the clouds. But like I said, I got a telescope I love to take out and see. And we appreciate you teaching us a little bit here oh, about it well. and having fun with us.